crazy month, uh, crazy good. And uh, the baby's been born, uh, William's been born, and he is adorable. And uh, fortunately, Lennox seems to be very, very accepting of her brother. So that's all really great stuff. Uh, and the last vidcast or whatever, somebody asked um, afterwards, where can you get my patterns and books? There's two places you can go. You can go to my website, alexandersonquilts.com and or thequiltshow.com. And between the two, we've got a pretty comprehensive store you can choose from. Also, an, oh, John brought me a picture of the baby. That's my fourth grandbaby. Yay. Yes, Linda, this is being recorded. He is just adorable. Um, he's two weeks old, and even now he's so different from what he was just two weeks ago. He, he actually was born during uh, my retreat in uh, the Tri-Valley, and it was with Becky Goldsmith. It was fantastic. For those of you that were there, I ordered some, some um, wools, and I got them yesterday. And, oh, it's like a candy box. Uh, next year, the retreat is going to be with Joanna Figuerella Fig Tree, and um, it is always after Quilting in the Garden, which is the fourth weekend of September. It starts the next Thursday, though we have some other things that are going on. And also for you retreaters that are here, I see you. Uh, we did get um, our teacher lined up for Tuesday, so you'll be very happy, Nancy Brown. Okay, so one of the things that came up last time as I was looking at questions was uh, was a new quilter and she asked does a quilt have to have batting and we chit chatted and the answer was well no there are things called summer spreads well spooky a gal i know on the east coast got her sister janet lie to watch it and janet collects antique quilts and she brought over a summer spread probably from the mid 1800s and i have it here Things are out of order, so be patient because I had to move. So Janet's letting me borrow this, and um, it's actually wonderful. My guess is the greens have faded like there's no tomorrow. Super faded greens. But I thought this was quite a wonderful example of a summer spread. So, Janet, thank you so much. And I will get it back to you when you get back from seeing Spooky. Speaking of Spooky, the reason her name is Spooky, Spooky, I don't know what your real name is, is because she was born on Halloween. So that's where that come from. So, okay. We teased, what did I do before I was a quilter? Well, I've always crafted I've always drawn, I've always done this, I've always done that. Um, and I fell into quilting my senior year in college. And what I wanted to show you were some of the things I did in college that ultimately led me to quilting. My, de my degree is basically in generic art. I mean, seriously. But perhaps the most profound teacher I had was a crochet class. And uh, Marika was a guest professor. We uh, had her every Friday. And she would do sculptures out of yarn. And she would like have the ugliest bag of yarn and be able to crochet magic. I mean, she would have installations that were just incredible. For instance, she I remember one piece she did that was a tapestry, but it was like three-dimensional and it was probably four times the wall behind me in size. I mean, it was just absolutely huge. And in her class, it was amazing to me how she could be so fearless pulling these odd colors out of a bag and putting them together. And so one day in my ignorance, I uh, decided I was gonna educate the people in my class of the good colors and the bad colors of the world. Mine knew I was a junior, maybe a junior in college, maybe senior. And I said, you know, or I said, you know, I love reds, I love blues, I love, no, not greens, I don't like green. Um, and then I started putting down browns and basically the autumn palette. And she stopped that class and she said, to say you hate a color tells me you're ignorant of its use. 
Yeah. So I was feeling rather stupid at that meet, at that juncture in my life, but it resonated with me. My mom says to say you hate a color is like saying you hate a key on the piano. And I know that you've heard me say this before and write about it. It's if you don't understand who that key on that piano is playing with. So in all of my college experience, that class probably had the biggest impact on me. I can't say I figured out how to work with colors that second, but it made me view colors very differently than how I view them now, which I love every single color. You know, if you have a color that you're nervous about, go get yourself a fabric that has that color in it and then work with it. So I wanted to share with you in that class, um, I crocheted this little vest. I'm going to switch back to the other screen. Oh, I don't know how to do that uh, to make sure you guys can see it. Here, hold on a second here. Oh, it's a little bit of a display here. But this was free form crochet. And um, this was, a, it's made out of wool. And it uh, fit me at the time. And I love this, you know. I love crochet. I don't know how to read a pattern to this day, but I did this in her class. Then um, having um, basically a generic art degree, but a love for fiber, another project I took on was bobbin lace. Bobbin lace, you have a pillow that's filled with sawdust, and then you have these little bobbin, wooden bobbins with the string hanging off of them, and you, you tie, weave them together or whatever. But anyways, I would spend hours, oh wait, I got two more, um, on these little lace pieces and end up with a little nothing. So I learned in college, even if you do a little nothing, you can present it quite beautifully. So here's, can, here's my, one of my bobbin laces that I did, I got one of those little frames that are plastic, and then I put some velvet behind it, and then I mounted the bobbin lace on it. So here's one. It's real, okay, so how I found this stuff, I, I knew I'd done it, but I couldn't find it, was we were digging through my parents' attic to get something for the new babies, and I unearthed these little projects. So see, here's this. I'm gonna tilt it in case it's shiny. Let's see, in this one. And eventually, I sold the bobbins and the bobbin lace because I knew that wasn't my thing at all. Too much time for nothing. But let me tell you, if you go to a store or whatever and it's handmade lace and they wanna charge you a million dollars for a yard of that lace, it's probably worth $2 million, it, it, unbelievable. So after I graduated from college, it was in December, I thought I was gonna be a weaver for life. And what I did was there was a French tapestry workshop in San Francisco. It was called the Abbasan School of Weaving or whatever, and, um, I decided I wanted to sign up for it. And what I'm gonna show you, I've never shown anyone because I thought it had fallen off the face of the earth until I found it in my parents' attic. And so what French tapestry weaving is, is you sit at a loom and the threads are coming down this way, the warp, unlike when you see weaving when people are working over a loom. And then you draw a cartoon that goes behind the warp that's coming down and you weave in the yarns or threads to match your cartoon on the back. And we lived in Pinole, which is East Bay. It was in San Francisco and I would drive over every day. But no, I took the bus over, come to think of it, because what happened was all of a sudden my back was hurting, I wasn't having any fun, I felt sick, I was exhausted, and guess what? I was pregnant. 
So I ended my career as a French Aubusson tapestry weaver after three months, but I, I found I found the piece a couple days ago, and here is the piece that I did. And actually, I'm really proud of myself with the colors. But let me show you the back too, like that. Look at all the yarns. And I have to laugh because I look at it now and it looks like a uterus or something like that. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna have to do something with this and, um, and frame it or something like that. So that's what I did before I was a quilter. Now I'm trying to decide what to show you next. Okay, so Houston is coming up and I'm not sure if you guys are going, but I'm there for both uh, fall, for market and for festival. Market is closed to the public, but it's where your store, quilt shop owners go and buy the stuff that you will be enjoying you know, in, throughout the year. So that's all really exciting. When I'm at market, I'm there to show off my stuff. And so I have two things that are debuting. One is my Fabric Line Mirage, which I've been talking about on Facebook, uh, the last, I think the last vidcast we did. And then I have Quilter Select stuff coming out. I have um, thread, I've got a really awesome rotary cutter. And so that will be there. I'll be hanging out in the Quilter Select booth during market and festival for the most part. And so when you're dialing back, when you're coming out with a fabric line, if you're lucky, you get the fabric, you know, a month or so before. One time I got the fabric the weekend before and it was Mother's Day and my daughter's birthday. But this time I've had the luxury of having it longer and I wanted to show you my last ditch effort of the last quilt. I still have some machine applique to do on it and my hope is I can do it today in about three hours. If I um, can, if I can get the applique done, I'm gonna go to PIQF tomorrow with Laura Nouns. So here's what I'm working on. Step back and here. It's all finished applique. I still have to machine applique the center of it and a little bit of the border. Uh, this was really fun and it was giving me attitude too. I was having a real hard time. The center was looking bare and I tried to put the holly out on the vine and it didn't work. And so finally, in a last ditch effort, I put it in the middle. And I think it works pretty well. There will be a free pattern for this, but you just have to stand by for that. So, okay, that's that. The other thing, oh, oh, I took a class from Freddie um, at Alden Lane the Tuesday before my retreat. And um, if you don't know Freddie Moran, I suggest you Google her. She, her work is just avant-garde, um, bright, whimsical, but not perfect. Mm -mm. Her whole thing is to just let it rip, okay? And she, we did, I think it was called um, Freddie's house or house in the wood or something. And some of you that are on here were in that house. Well, it was funny because um, I don't want to say I'm into precision because that'd be the biggest, baddest lie on the face of the earth. I'd like to pretend I'm into precision, but stuff happens. And uh, Dawn, who has a, a quilt shop called uh, Bolts in the Bathtub down in Southern California, she is in per, into precision. And she and I were like, look at each other going, I can't do this, I can't do this. I, can't, I have to care that the star tips are cut off and this and that, but no, 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 not in Freddie's class. It was just improv cut, don't worry about it, etc. And I was working in my fabric line and I came home and I made one last tree and I finished it. So let me show that to you. Okay. Um, so there's this one here too. I can't believe I made this. It was so much fun. 
And guess what? The tips are chopped off and they're floating in space and all that good stuff. Here's the main print of Mirage. So, you know, I'm all about taking workshops these days, you guys. I love, love, love um, taking workshops. Okay, let me back up. Saw the new rotary cutter on the last show. Does it fit the blades from Ulfa? Yes, it does. Uh, actually, there's a video um, on the quilt show, or maybe, no, maybe it's at quilterselect.com that shows how the rotary cutter works. I love this. It's like we're in a big party or something. So, okay. I had a book come out last year, and it's called Make Your First Quilt. Uh, one of the things that I love doing more than anything is ushering new quilters into the fold. Uh, unfortunately, I can't be there teaching them hands-on like my friend Laura Nouns, but once in a blue moon, I've had the opportunity to show people what quilting is about and get them started and get them hooked. It's all about hooking them, you know what I mean, in the least painless way so the book the book actually would if you're a seasoned quilter it's a great um it's a great weekend project i'll show you the quilt in the book and then i'm gonna show you what i did with it i had my daughter bind it it was kind of like make my first binding but adair did it so That's the quilt, and the idea of the little book, boy, I'm trashing John's clean office. The idea of the little book is that you make this simple block, and then you can turn the block different ways, kind of like a log cabin, to get the look you want. So working with the new line, I have gotta quilt this too before market. This is my little sample I did. So that was, that's really fun and it's really easy and I am really busy at my sewing machine. Um, oh, speaking of sewing machines, on TQS, John says we're going to be talking about it next. Um, when, when, honey? Oh, here it is. <laughs> Vanna. Okay. It's called the Eversound Sparrow 20. Here, take this, hun. I fell in love with this little machine at uh, Spring Market. Um, it is under two, uh, $300, super lightweight. I bought it, and I bought it because I really didn't want my grandbabies on my Bernina. And um, one of the things it has is a slide control for speed and stuff like that. So I bought it, I sewed on it, I fell in love with it, and we'll be talking more about it at TQS. I will be using it for a class machine, but that's, that's to come, that's not now. Okay, also, at Houston on Thursday afternoon, I don't know the class number or anything like that, but I'm doing an interactive lecture. I'm doing two, they're back to backs. One is on scrap quilting and the other is beautifully quilted. And that like, that one, um, boy, that's something I am still learning about. I don't know about you guys. Uh, quilting design and all that. The more I know, the less I know, but I also know the stars are, you know, the, the heavens are, sky's the limit when it comes to quilting. But back in the day, I took a class from a Mennonite woman named Lucy Hilty, and she's sadly no longer with us. And she taught me the basics of, okay, if you look at a quilt top, how do you go about quilting it? And she gave me some basic tools that seem to even be extending into the modern movement and more contemporary quilts. That's what that workshop is going to be. Then the other workshop with the scrap is going to be, okay, I don't know about you, but I've got myself a pretty healthy stash. Yeah, I do. And um, how do you get super successful scrap quilts out of it? But I wanna show you the scrap quilt. I think it's my favorite of all time that I made. This, this scrap quilt was based on a quilt top owned by Julie Silver um, and she deals quilts. Her quilt is Universe and if you go to thequiltshow.com 
and in the show, in the search function, in the show search, go Julie Silber. We did a little field piece with her, but also hanging behind her is this quilt top that I have coveted for years. And I believe it's Julie's favorite too. And when you look at this quilt top, you think, I'm assuming a female made it. Um, and you think, what was that woman going through? Because it's almost like crazy mode, this quilt. It's just amazing. Well, once a year I go away with my girlfriends and uh, we quilt. And I always have to come up with a project because you get up there and you better have your stuff with you. And I called Julie and I said, this is the year of universe. That's the name of the quilt. And I, it's time for universe too. Would you mind if, um, John, something happened here. Would you mind if I, if, oh, there we go. Okay, good. Uh, would you mind if I copied the quilt? And it's interesting. I showed this in a little lunch I went to the other day and they said, why did you ask her permission? And I just kind of thought it was the right thing to do, even though the quilt is, gosh, you know, how many hundred years old? I don't know. But, but um, I'll show you what I, I'll show you my scrap quilt that I made based on Universe 2. John, you might want to help me hold this up. Okay. This is heavy, or big. Okay, I got it. So I don't know. Okay, there it is. So in her quilt, it had this in here, but it was real cuckoo. But then it had the nine patches on, I'm going to put it on here to see if we can see here. It'll be up in a minute. Um, it had the nine patches on the outside in the, over in here in grays. And then I quilted it straight line quilting. And that was not easy to do, believe it or not, even with my walking foot. What happened was I, okay, the center has, you know, this kind of quilting on it. And thank you, Jackie Gearing. And then out here a straight line, but the straight lines are on an angle like this. And so what happened, thanks John, what happened was ultimately, um, okay, I've lost the notes here. Ultimately, the outside edges, okay John. So what happened was it rippled on the edge and, and I thought, well, I'm gonna square it up, I'm gonna bind it, and then it's still, okay, yay, uh, we're still here, and then I would like, I would like square it up and uh, stretch it, you know, like how you get it wet and then you pin it and you make it all square and all that good stuff. Um, it didn't work. So what I ended up doing was, here, let's bring it back here, chopping off the binding that I sewed on by hand and then I ended up facing it. Oh, I wonder if that's sewn in. No, good. I ended up facing it so there's really not a binding on it. And before I faced it, I actually ran a gathering stitch um, in the areas that were wonky so that it wasn't a complete, you know, ruffle, but enough that I could bring it in and make it square. So in, <laughs> this is one of my favorite quilts, but it has, it's like your child that just gives you attitude. In the process of squaring it up, this fabric ran. It ran all the way through to the back. Well, it's gone now. So I got Centhropol, H-E, or High Energy Centhropol, because I called Ricky, I was in an absolute panic. And I put it in the washing machine and it didn't take it out. And Ricky's like going, what are you talking about? Centhropol always works. And I said, I'm telling you, Ricky, it's not working. And I did it three more times and it wasn't coming out. And then I went back to what I call the old fashioned Centhropol and it came out. So. I have a washing machine with an agitator, so maybe I had to use the old fashioned kind. Maybe if you have one of the high energy washing machines, you use the HE Centerpol, but I, this, this was the most problematic teenager on the face of the earth, but it worked. And it's actually gonna be in Gen Q and they're patterning it, I think in their next issue, so I'm very excited about that. Okay. So we're on a little bit of a delay here, but I'm wondering if there's any questions from you guys. And I love, can I tell you right now, 
I know some of your names, but I have a South Africa person here. I have a person from Israel. That makes me so happy. Do you want to see what Old Fashioned Center Paul is? Let me run into my, my um, laundry room and grab it. Hold on. This is the one you want, okay? Um, I believe it was high, it said um, something energy on the other one. But um, I, if your quilt shop doesn't carry this, oh, Hawaii, hey, Leslie. Um, uh, if your quilt shop doesn't carry this, you can get this on Amazon. But you guys know I am all about supporting your local quilt shop. If it doesn't have this kind of pink label to it, mm -mm, don't get it. Get the other stuff. So, I mean, I, yes, I have problems. More <laughs> than you know. So, as far as the rotary, I'm looking for questions. Oh, Scotland. Yay, Kansas. Virginia. Oh, gosh, I like you guys so much. Um, um, as far as the rotary cutter goes, go to quilterselect.com and then there's little mini videos. I'm, I'm not in my environment where I can show you this stuff here. It is beautifully, hev it's heavily weighted, which I wanted. I wanted something that felt really good in my hands. And also the blade change is literally a snap. There's nothing to it. Here it is, but I, I, I'm not going to cut on your desk. Okay. I'm not going to do that. It's super heavily weighted. Um, so the other thing that I want you guys to know too, I get this periodically and it's like, I miss your show, Simply Quilts. You guys, that's Rearview Mirror. Get on thequiltshow.com. We have a lot of really great shows coming up. Um, and we have a complete diverse, diverse, a diverse group of guests. For instance, Kathy Wiggins, she is going to have a show in Houston. You know how they have sub shows? Her quilts are all out of leather. And I don't know that I'll ever work that way, but that was a fascinating show. To be then contrasted by, there was a show on working with panels. You have your wonderful panels, you know, that you get and you think, what am I ever going to do with? And Cindy McChesney showed us what to do with our panels. And then I don't know if you guys have seen these Moda panels that are dolls that you can make for your grandbabies or your children. Adorable, adorable. And how to customize them. And this is just stuff that's coming up right now. And then we've got um, Rosa from Spain, the Apple Quick Lady. And she shows us how she works with her tools. And honestly, I'm a convert of her stuff. I love like the the um, the light bulbs on that Christmas tree quilt I was showing you. It's all finished applique, so easy, so fun. Okay, so what, oh, and then the legend. Every year we go to somebody's house and we celebrate that person um, of how they have contributed to the quilting community. I think a lot of new quilters are coming into the, well, I think, I know, I love that a bunch of new quilt makers are coming into the fold and they don't really have an understanding of how this industry has developed from, say, the early 70s. So, like, the first legend we did was Jenny Beyer. Um, we went to her house and I'm just like, just pinch me that I'm in Jenny Beyer's house. I mean, really. <coughs> it was fantastic. Um, Libby Lehman, Eleanor Burns, I mean, Michael, um, um, I, I mean, just go legends, okay? There's so, I don't want to insult anybody by leaving somebody out, but we're heading, I'm not going to tell you where, to tape the legend, and um, I've known this legend from when I started quilting. I will give you that hint. She was a guest at East Bay Heritage Quilters, and I stomped around San Francisco with her. So, and remember, when you join um, for forty-two ninety-five a year, you have access to all the shows, and you can just search. And we've got a um, also, if you wanted to say do applique, you type applique in, and all the shows with applique will come up, and all that. Um, what's the name of that sewing machine? It's called, it's called um, the Sparrow. Okay, there are three sparrows. All right, there's a low end. A medium, I don't want to say low, but it's under 200. Um, it's mechanical, and then there's a medium that's electronic. I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. And then the high end. 
I chose the Sparrow 20, which is the medium, because it had the slide control, my grandchildren's little hands. Um, it has 80 stitches. Oh, here comes John again. <laughs> 80 stitches. Um, it had needle up, needle down, um, tack stitch. Uh, actually, you can even sew without using the presser foot on it. And you guys want to know a secret? We've gotten permission to be able to sell them via the web. So um, stay tuned. They'll be available in the continental U.S., I believe, right? Correct. Uh, sorry, Miss Alaska that's in there. Not Alaska or Hawaii? Probably not. Probably not. But your local quilt shop can get it. It's um, distributed by Brewer, and that's what you need to know. And actually, Gene Wales turned me on to this machine. And yes, okay, I'm, I see a squirrel outside. I <laughs> um, um, the stitch is fabulous, which is probably the most important. And you guys are helping me out here. Yeah, Roberta and Mary. Um, Eversone is the brand. So, Marcia, you must know uh, about this. And again, it's um, by Brewer. And what I love about this machine, well, number one, I bought it for my grandkids, even though the oldest is four. Uh, but it is perfect for the new sewist. Perfect. Because they're not going to commit to go get a beautiful Bernina or I want them to, but it's an entry-level machine and or for workshops. So, and it only weighs 10 pounds. So that's that. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, will there be, Joe, will there be a uh, membership renewal deal since TQS won't be in Houston? John? Yes. Come on in. Thanks, Joe, for asking that. And I want to say that I'll be in Houston. Ricky will be in Houston. We've got classes. What's, uh, she wants to, Joe wants to know if we're not going to be in Houston, what's the membership deal? Get in front of the camera. Your turn. Well, we have a couple of things going on. We have a pattern by Ricky. Look at them, not me. Yeah, we have a pattern by Ricky. <laughs> Um, we also have some book downloads. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really going to be fun. We're going to be announcing soon. And you have the block of the month this year is outstanding. Yes, it's Sue Garman. Yeah. And um, I'm going to say this quickly about Sue Garman. As you know, her husband passed. And it's been a really rough go for Sue. And we received several requests to have a forum for Sue on the site, do something for Sue. I talked to Sue and she would prefer not. But she knows that we love her and that um, we're pulling for her. Now she's fighting her fight of, the li of her life. And I feel ever so blessed and grateful that she did our block of the month. You guys are, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, that woman, that woman is a testament to courage, strength, beauty, grace, in light of probably the darkest tunnel a person can go through. So we love Sue. I know you guys do too, but that's why we really haven't splashed it all over. And that's all I want to say about that. So um, let's see. Oh, someone, uh, KK Quilts. I don't know where you are, but she goes, I carry them. Nice machines. Yeah, they are nice. For that price, you got that right. Um so, someone here, sorry, Kristen, only getting the black screen. I think that's on your end. And I, oh, I, you guys, you're writing such nice things. Um, thanks for the great newsletter. I wish I could take credit for that. I, I give that to Mary Kay Davis and Lilo Bowman. They scour the world web to bring you really good stuff. And... It's funny, Mary Kay's kid now we even have drawn into the fold of quilting. He's an engineer, but eh, we got lucky. We have him now. So um, this will be on YouTube and accessible. I would like to do this on a more frequent basis, but um, for right now, we're just swimming um, as fast as we can next week. I'll be in Chicago with Ricky outside for our last super seminar. And that that's going to be sad, okay? Like, I love doing those super seminars. But um, it had run its course. And now Ricky's going to be doing his own thing. Quilt Illuminarium, I think is what he's calling it. So he is still on the road. I am still on the road. I will be traveling periodically for Bernina. But as you know from I said last time, I've got to be very careful 
how I do this at this point. But that's the reason I love this so much, so I can talk to you guys. So um, thanks so much for supporting us, for supporting me. We have such a lovely um, community that we live in. And if you are at Houston, I will be in the Quilter Select booth, God willing, um, for sure there for my, I, I will, I will. Everything's great. Everything's great on the home front. Everything's great. <laughs> Fine. Um, I will be there and um, we will all, oh, the Rare Bear, there's a Rare Bear party one night that all the uh, proceeds will be going to uh, the Rare Bear program. If you don't know what that is, please Google it. It's Rare Bear for Kids with Rare Diseases. Uh, Lilo has really done a great job on this. And on TQS, we have a bunch of bears that different celebrities have made. I hate the word celebrities. Different quilters that you probably know their name, okay? And they will be up for auction. I'd like to say, vote for me. But I'm going to tell you right now, mine's okay. <laughs> there are some coming in that I just, wow. And so if you made one of those bears, thank you. It's a really great, fresh, new effort that we can do okay oh booth 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 um look for me i don't know the title of it but look under floriani or r n k or quilter select i'm not quite sure what it is but this is how you have to think about it floriani is the mothership and then under it are different divisions like jenny haskin has a division Quilter Select is another division, but it's all managed by R N K. And what that means is Ricky, not Ricky Tim's, Ricky Brooks, Ricky N, I'm gonna do it backwards, K, K A Y. So that's how you remember that. And I think we're like in the six, seven, or eight hundred aisles. I, I know it's in the other room and it's written down, but um and if you're a store owner, I have two schoolhouses, one with um with a quilter select and then we have some morning take and teach classes and then also um with rjr and i've got some really good giveaways mm -hmm. very good giveaways so okay um i've got a pack for chicago um i gotta finish that quilt so i can go to piqf tomorrow pacific international quilt festival i can do it it's three hours work so you guys thank you so much for joining me Thanks for putting up with the bumps in the beginning. It's been great. You guys have a great day. Happy quilting.